Hello everybody and welcome back to another Pioneer gameplay video. Today I set out to build the cheapest possible Pioneer deck that just might be competitive enough to get your results out of tournament. We're playing some mono green elves. It's going to cost you a whole $5 on MTGO, 58 bucks in the paper world, but if you're on a super budget, there is some things you can cut from the sideboard to make the deck down to $40. So for less than the price of a single Oko, you too can own Pioneer Elves. You can find the deck list link down below in the description if you want to pick up the deck yourself. So Elves is an archetype that is capable of sneaking out wins against basically anything. So we're going to run it through some games on MTGO today to see if a $5 deck is capable of taking down perhaps $400 decks. So hit that like button if you're hyped for today's video and let's jump right into the deck tech followed by the gameplay. Hope you enjoy. If you wanted to pick up today's deck, or any cards really, it would be awesome if you purchased through our decklist link down below. That is our TCGplayer.com affiliate link, and when you purchase through that link, it really helps support the channel. This video is supported by our generous patrons. If you'd like to join the marination as well, you can find our Patreon link down below in the description, and you'll also gain access to our Patreon exclusive Discord server where we discuss deck ideas for future videos. Just wanted to let you guys know that if you had a little bit more funds and wanted to improve this deck, you can take out the card draw package that you see in this deck and splash into black and use Collected Company and Shaman of the Pack. But this video is dedicated to my fellow budget players out there. I was a budget player once. I know what it's like. I know where you're coming from. So this one's for you. Let's check it out. Starting right off with the main engine of the deck. We got Beast Whisper and Vanquisher's Banner are the main pieces to help you just loot through your deck as you play elf after elf after elf. Because whenever you play an elf, these things are going to draw you a card. Vanquisher's Banner is also a Lord effect and Beast Whisper also counts as an elf as well for future elf synergies. And Marwyn is just like an absolute beast to pair with these things because whenever an elf enters, she's gonna get a counter and then she taps for green mana equal to her power. So when, when we start just flooding elves all over the board, drawing a bunch of cards with Beast Whisper and Vanquisher's Banner, Marwyn's power is gonna keep going up and up and up and up. And then she's gonna tap for like a lot of mana so that we can keep playing even more elves or just play one of our finishers. So that's like the main engine that we wanna go for. So we do need a lot of mana to get this going. So we have four different mana dorks. Usually you'll only see Elvish Mystic and Land of War Elves and maybe sometimes Paradise Druid, but we're going even further and also running Druid of the Cowl. All the mana production really helps, especially when our main plan is trying to get out one of the four drops or five drops. We have Beast Whisper or Vanquisher's Banner, so that really helps out. Onto our non mana dark elves, Elvish Clan Caller also does a good job at helping close out the game because we start using its ability and tutoring out more Elvish Clan Callers to just pump our elves a ton, make them really huge, and start beating face. Elvish Visionary is there to just cantrip. Uh, this with the Beast Whisper out is pretty cool. Just basically a two mana divination. Helps us find our stuff and have consistent draws. And then Dwinan's Elite is a really cool one to pair with Marwyn because Marwyn says whenever an elf enters. It doesn't say whenever a non-token elf enters. So Dwinan's Elite is going to give you two elf bodies when it enters, uh, allowing Marwyn to get additional counters and tap for even more mana. So that's pretty nice. And then we have a few singletons to close it out. A singleton Dwinan just as a another lord and life gain effect but end race forerunners is the finisher that we want to eventually loot into this is basically our pioneer legal crater hoof behemoth which also happens to be super budget when it enters our stuff's going to get plus two plus two vigilance and trample until end of turn and when we go as wide as this deck wants to this is just going to basically win the game we have a total of 19 lands, all forests for budget reasons. If you wanted to go 18 lands, that works too. And, uh, you know, consider another end race forerunners or something. Uh, so let's move on to the sideboard. Like I always say, it is subject to change. If I do change it, I'll let you know right now. But we have three copies of Miss Cutter Hydra. Now, Miss Cutter Hydra can't be countered, has protection from blue. So if you're going up against the mono blue tempo decks or just like blue X control decks in general, it should be a pretty decent finisher to just throw out at any point. It's also got haste, I believe. And then we got another copy of the Winan. The Winan gains you life. So obviously it's good to bring in in the matchups where the opponent's gonna aggro out with burn and just little aggressive creatures. And then we have a play set of Shaper Sanctuary uh, because Elves is a deck that really does not want to be interacted with. So Shaper Sanctuary is going to make it so whenever the opponent wants to interact with your elves, we are going to get to draw even more cards and stabilize a bit. And then we have a play set of Reclamation Sage uh, to destroy artifacts and enchantments. 
And then finally, we have three copies of Vivian, Champion of the Wilds. And this is going to come in against Control because she can minus to give you a little bit of card advantage. Dig three deep for a creature. And you can just start recycling that ability using it over and over again. So if you're going up against Control and they keep on board wiping you, you can just keep getting those creatures back by constantly activating Vivian for more value. So that's about it. I'll get the stream started and I'll see you in the first round. Really quick before we get into the gameplay, I'd like to welcome a brand new patron to the family. Jeff Benson, thank you very much for your tier two pledge. I really appreciate it. Welcome to the marination. And with that, let's get right into the gameplay. Hope you enjoy. Got a game here against It's Lux. And yes, we're going to be on the play with some budget $6 elves and pioneer. And that is going to be a keep. We got the banner we're going to get to. And we have hexproof ramp dudes to get up to it for sure. F6 through our first couple turns. Gilded Goose. So this is probably an Oko deck of sorts. Paradise Dude, go. A uh, Beast Whisperer would not be a bad draw here. Okay, 100% an Oko deck. But Oko doesn't actually affect us too hard. Okay, it's a Merchant Dock Hand. So it's a Scrap Trawler combo deck. Don't call Serpent, Karn the Great Creator. So maybe not. Maybe it's just an aggro deck. All right, let's go Paradise Druid, Elvish Clan Caller, pass the turn. All right, they're setting up for something. Stone Coil or Cryptolith Right makes their all their dudes tap for mana, so that's pretty cool. This is a very underrated card. I don't know why this doesn't see more play. It's really good. Imagine it on this board. They just play it off these two forests and their dudes just tap for mana. It'd be really good. Oh, they did have it. They did have what we thought. We'll go time. So something's going on here with Karn and Stone Coil. I'm guessing Hardened Scales, but it's probably, maybe it's the Great Henge. Maybe it's the Great Henge. Because the Great Henge will give all their creatures counters. Let them just go off. They're trying to do the same thing we're trying to do. It's just probably play a bunch of creatures, draw a bunch of cards. Bay of Wishes. Oh yeah, something spicy is happening. And it looks like they're setting up exactly what they want to set up. Don't coil on one. Alright. On Elf, Landmore Elf, draw a card. There's a Beast Whispers. We can draw double the cards. All right, pass the turn. We got it going. All right, we're starting to go off now. We don't have the Marwin, but we can still do a decent amount of stuff. Cryptolith Right is in all of your EDH decks that you, that have green. That makes sense. It's such a good card. It's a very good ramp spell. All right, Karn the Dang Creator. Now. Don't get, like, Damping Sphere. That would be annoying. So they have both Fave Wishes and Karn, so they're desperately trying to grab something out of their board that's very important to their strategy. Is it, like, Throne of the God Pharaoh? It might be Throne of the God Pharaoh. Because it looks like with Cryptolith, right, they're trying to tap out a bunch of dudes. So I'm thinking, yeah, maybe it's Throne of the God Pharaoh. Stone Cold Servant was literally in there for em Emery to mill over and get back. So they want a lot of creatures on board for something. I'm expecting them to also have Ornithopter in that deck as well. And Merchant's Dockhand, again, is probably there just because it's an artifact for Emery to get back. So they also probably have like uh, Ginger Brute, maybe uh, Inquisitive Puppet. Maybe Stone, um, Bowmack Courier. Walking Ballista, too. And Walking Ballista is very annoying. Alright. Play a Beast Whisper. Draw a card. Another Vanquisher's Banner. Alright, Elvis, Elvis Mickey. Draw a couple cards. Another Elvish Clan Caller. 
All right, go tap Land War Elves, tap this, play another Elvish Clan Caller, draw a couple cards. Now they're probably going to use their Ballista to shoot down this Clan Caller in response, and they don't. They don't do that. All right, let's go to combat, and I'm going to attack Karn, I guess, for five. What's up, Kyoji? How's it going? Wrath of Nut all over creatures. They can't be impregnated. Yes, they can. They definitely can. Oh, it's a paradoxical outcome deck? It could be. They have a lot of cheap stuff. They're letting Karn die. So they're not getting another thing out of their board, which is good. Maybe it's a Biomancer's Familiar deck with Walking Ballista. Golos. Okay, so with uh, with ca Cascading Cataracts, they can activate Golos next turn. But we're, like, nutting off super hard here, so we should be good. Temple of Mystery just to scry. All right, play another Elvish Clan Caller. Draw a card, another Druid of the Cowl. And I think I'm just going to go Vanquisher's Banner and swing all. An elf. Go to combat and attack for a beefy amount. That's a lot of damage. Says flex tape guy. You think the opponent could have Paradox Engine? Oh yeah, that's probably what it is. It's probably a Paradox Engine deck. So they want to like use Fae Wishes and Karn to go grab a Paradox Engine probably. How are they going to consistently find the Cryptolith right though? Because it seems like they need that very bad for their strategy. So... Maybe, like, maybe they have uh, one in their sideboard for Fae Wishes to grab. And maybe they have, like, uh, I don't know. There's no Transmute card. There's no Muddle the Mixture. Are you going to Fog here? They're going to activate Merchant's Dock Hand to Scry 2, right? It Scry's 2, right? Look at the top X cards. Put one in your hand, put the rest in the bottom. So... You thought it was not Pioneer? Okay, they can activate Golos. The question is, do they find an answer in the top three cards? They do not. They find a couple Gwyn Nest Cranes and a land. But what artifact can they get to win? Their deck is definitely spicy. I'm curious to see what it's capable of. Yeah, and I think this is a turn where we got it. I think they're just going to pass here. Yep, they scoop it up. All right, on to sideboard. Now, I was scared of Damping Sphere, but I feel like I would want Damping Sphere here. Um, it looks like they got a lot of artifacts and stuff and enchantments, so I'm going to bring in the play set of Rexage. Um, and that's probably it. So let's cut the Singleton Dwine in. Let's cut the Singleton Enrays. Um, you know, maybe I kind of want Enrays here. It feels like the, the board's going to be stalled up a little bit, and this could just help me fight through it. Um, let's cut the Dwinin's Elites. They're not too needed here. Uh, I guess I can keep one in. And let's run it like that. Engine did nothing wrong. Yeah, it did. Alright, let's keep that hand. We got Vanquisher's Banner to get up to. Which I'm quite fond of that idea. I, I want to save one of my Land War Elves. It'd be a bummer if they Walking Blissed one away and took me off of that. So maybe I should just go commit all my Elves in the second turn. Okay, tell you what. If I draw a, another Elf off the top next turn, I'll just go to triple Elves here. 
Don't kill Serpent on one, that's fine. Yo, Marwin on turn two, though? I'll take it. Now, it would be very sad if that got ballisted away. But that's our combo. That's, we want to get Marwin out along with our draw card effects. So that's our combo. We're going for it. Okay, now I really want a Rex Sage. I hope I top deck a Rex Sage here, and I don't. All right, Marwin. Please, no Ballista. They have one card left? What do they mold to? <laughs> don't have a Ballista, dude. Arn? Aw, oh, don't tell me it's Ballista on two. Wipe both of my creatures. Okay, Faye Wishes is going to go grab something. Non-creature card. I guess Paradox Engine. Did they just get the Molta 5 Nut? And they might have got the Molta 5 Nut. They Molta 5? All right, yeah, that's what I was thinking. I kind of want to just uh, play a, a, an elf here, even without the Vanquisher trigger, just to get Marwyn out of range of a Ballista, because I really don't want Marwyn to die. A Sky Sovereign. Does this deal three damage to any creature? Target creature. Okay, so I'm definitely going to play some elves to get Marwyn out of range. So, Llanowar elves, get a counter, get a counter, get a counter. Vanquisher's Banner. Alright, so now Marwyn's out of range of Sky Sovereign. Oh, I only needed to do two elves. Because the, I forgot about Vanquisher's Banner pumping. Emery. Alright, for a Mold of Fire, the opponent's doing stuff. And cast the Fae of Wishes. Alright. Now I go off. Emery's got it going. I just gotta draw constant flow creatures and not lands. All right, land or elves, draw a card. Grow Emery. Oh, there's a Rex Sage. All right, that's pretty great. Rex Sage. Blow up Cryptolithrite. Yes. Play a land. Play Druid of the Cowl. And I have fizzled because I played one too many elves last turn. Attack here, and attack here, and attack here. And they go to eight. All right, and we got a super fat wide board. Not nearly as fat as your mom because she's like intergalactic, but all right, we got there. They scoop it up. Taken down, um, probably a paradox engine deck. I'm pretty sure. I just, I kind of find it very inconsistent the way they don't have a, a, a guaranteed way to find Cryptolith, right? And that seems like they need that for their strategy. But I'm curious to see what that deck's about. If you watch the YouTube channel, hit me up. Let me know what that's about. Got a game here against Monkey Mage 1, and we're going to be on the draw with some $6 Pioneer Elves. And that is going to be a keep because we got the Beast Whisper, so we got what we want to do. Just don't thought seize me. I said don't thought seize me. Dang. Well, at least I have a backup Elvish Clan Caller to do something with my mana. So this might be a little bit of a difficult matchup because they're just going to kill our essential stuff like Beast Whisperer and Clan Caller. Because they're going to have like a lot of like abrupt decay effects and stuff, so it's going to be difficult to get stuff going. Like, if I do resolve a banner, they, they're they just gonna, like, Assassin's Trophy it, or something like that. Lens Leaf Siphoner. Ballista on one? Oh, Hangerback Walker. So it's, uh, it's Hardened Scales. Which is not bad. Um. I'm gonna go with... I think I'm gonna go Paradise Druid here, because I want to play two things next turn. Um, I am gonna attack. I don't think they're gonna block. Yeah. German 1. 
takes up their dude, which they could have done on my turn and blocked. Okay, there's a Vanquisher's Banner. That is something that we definitely want to do. So let's play the Druid of the Cowl to make sure we got the mana. And let's play an Elvish Visionary, which I should have done first, actually. Dwinin, that's pretty good. So I can get I can take the next turn off to get down the banner and then I can start going off. No, they can take my banner. Oh man. They keep getting the timely thought seizes right when they need them. Why? Why don't you get a thought seize at a bad time? Why do you always get it at the perfect time? They always do. That's the one thing that I dislike about Pioneer is is that Thoughtseize is still in it. <laughs> That's the like one of my things that I hate most about Modern is is hand disruption. I hate it so much. That's like my pet peeve in Magic is hand disruption. You you use a Thoughtseize on me, I'm just like f you, dude. Like in my head. <laughs> Any card which you would like to design a deck around? Um, I would like to design a mirror deck, except there's not enough good mirrors. Take the swing. Um, let's go. Dwine in, start getting some life. I guess I'll play Lanamore Elves. Get him for two. You love to see an Is It or Grixis Fevered Visions deck? That sounds like fun. But I think, uh. Don't you gotta have fogs in Fevered Visions? So you gotta go like green? Four color green white? Have like Wraths and Fogs? Because usually a deck like that runs a Howling Mind Effects like that usually need fogs to stay alive. Oh, we got the Vanquisher's Banner. All right, so do I want to do that or do I just want to go Elvish Clan Caller and attack? Um, they only have one card left. I feel like there's no downside to really just going Elvish Clan Caller swing. They are going to get a counter on this. They are going to trade with something. I don't know. Part of me says that just going clan collar swing is not bad. Uh You know what? No, let's be let's be smart about it. Let's play the Vanquisher's Banner and just stay back for a turn. They didn't even take up their hangerback walker. I think they just gave up at this point. Because they know I'm about to go off. Fevered Visions plus Narset Days I'm doing? Yeah, Narset with Fevered Visions could be pretty cool. That would be pretty awesome. Make them unable to draw extra so that you get to benefit off Fevered Visions, but they don't. But at the same time, that counteracts your other plan of like... What you want to do with uh, Fevered Visions. You want them to have a bunch of cards, but Narset doesn't let them have a bunch of cards. Could be a wombo combo though. You would need a lot of control though, so I think you would need to go into just guy just to have supreme verdicts. Because if you're and you're gonna give an aggro deck a whole bunch of card advantage, you're gonna be beaten down so hard. So I think you just need, um, you definitely need um, some kind of board wipes. They're gonna fight off uh, Dwinin, but that's okay. Start playing a bunch of dudes here. Elvish Clan Caller. Draw a card. Got a land. Play a land. Widen's Elite. Draw a card. Get another dude. Widen's Elite. Get another dude. Pass the turn, and next turn I will just swing out. For sure.
Wine and Constrictor is their last card. That's fine. And they're going to proliferate. Sure. That one spot, one drop, one spell per turn enchantment. That's like my favorite thing out of Throne of Eldrain. They're going to get in with the Voracious Hydra. Do I care? Do I just win here if I swing out? They have three blockers. My biggest dude's going to be four, four, and four. I'm going to take three, six, uh, nine, ten, eleven. Oh, wait. No, I have plenty of blockers. Yeah, I just take this and swing. They die, for sure. Yeah, I just attack here and they die. They have no first strike, so they can't, like, shrink the dudes by blocking the clan caller. So it's over. Will you see a new attempt at Mono Blue Ponza? Uh, probably not, because I already played it three times on the channel. I played Mono Blue twice and then I switched it to Blue Red. On the third time, so I think we're done with that. Tbh. Yep, got him the minus seven. On to sideboarding against hardened scales. Probably want reclamation sage, and it can also blow up like stone coil serpent and like walking ballistas and hardened scales and you know stuff like that. So maybe that might be useful. And uh, Shaper Sanctuary can draw us a bunch of cards if they have a Ballista shooting my dudes, which would be very annoying. So maybe I want Shaper Sanctuaries just for Ballista. I can just cut Dwine in and raise two Dwine ins elites. You know, again, I feel like this is one of the matchups where I might actually want and raise because it still it might be a board stall. I know I want Rex Sages. You know, something's telling me to bring in the Shapers. I'm gonna try without it. If I get completely wrecked by a Ballista, plus Harden Scales, I'll bring in the uh, Shaper Sanctuaries for game three. Would you risk four color on what? On Fevered Visions? Oh yeah, that'd be cool. Like a prison sort of like lock, law version of... Uh, Oh, that's good. Let's keep that. Like a lock version of, of Fevered Visions, allowing them only to play one spell per turn. That'd be pretty cool. But we don't have Curse of Exhaustion in Pioneer, and we don't have Rule of Law. Wait, we did get Rule of Law reprinted, but I think, didn't it get reprinted in like a Master Set or something? Or is it, or is Rule of Law in Standard? Because Daphne's Silence will only stop certain decks, but not the creature decks. Because, yeah, it would be really cool. Fear Visions plus Rule of Law, if that's possible in Pioneer. I know Rule of Law did just get reprinted. Stone Coil Serpent? Well, I can blow that up with the Rex Sage. Um, do I want to do that right now? I guess I do. Preserve my life total, because my life total is relevant in this game. I still have four mana to do two things next turn. Hello. Demir for life. Thank you for the follow. How are you doing? Glad to finally catch the stream. Well, thank you for coming out to the stream. I really appreciate it. What this be? No, it's the Ballista, but good thing they don't have the Harden Scales, so it's fine. Are they going to shoot down to the Land War Elves here? Well, I definitely have to Rex Sage that. Okay. Never mind. I was going to say I have to Rex Sage that before I play my Lord. Okay, I'm just going to go Paradise Druid here, so the next turn I can do two two drops. Get in there for two, bring him down to 18. 
The opponent's not doing anything too scary either. Don't tell me you got another ballista. Oh man, please just stop. All right. Um, well, I can wreck sage the ballista and then play an elvish clan caller, but this will die in the process. Got to do it though. Got to be done. Yep, exactly. All right, Elvish Visionary, please find me like a card draw effect, Beast Whisper, Vanquisher's Banner, or something. Yeah, see, if I had Shaper Sanctuary, like I said I was gonna bring in, this would have been a lot better. I would have drawn three extra cards by now off a of one drop enchantment. Still working on your Bog Tribal for Pioneer? Oh yeah, that's that sounds like a lot of fun. You can run Sin Prodder, um, Glen Sleeve Siphoner, Blood Scrivener, uh, uh, Ruin, uh, Ruin. Uh, what's that three drop ogre? The uh, is it Ruin Raider? Yeah, it is Ruin Raider. There's Ruin Raider. All right. Attack Nissa, attack Nissa. They're probably gonna let Nissa die here. Or, no, they'll probably jump and leave Nissa on one. Pass a turn. Okay, there's the hardened scales. What's your last card? You got one card left. Don't be something amazing like a rich car. Don't be a rich car. Please don't be a rich car. No. No, this looks like a rich car. Okay, Voracious Hydra. That's still very annoying, though. Dang. Enter just big enough to kill a clan caller. Can I get a land off the top, please? I really need a land off the top. Okay, there we go. Got the land. Now I can go searching with this dude. I, I didn't have to do it at sorcery speed, but they knew it was coming anyways. Try to get at the Nyssa. And now they're in uh, top deck mode. I think we should be good. There's no reason for them to block here, so yeah. Current iteration is just Rakdos. Yeah, I, I love the idea, and I actually thought about it myself. I thought about it myself, and uh, I might put that together. Uh, I'll try to brew, uh, brew with it next week. That sounds like an interesting idea. All right, well, you know what we're going to do. Let's go get another one. The last one. And get in there. What you gonna do about it? Stormfist is better. Oh yeah, I forgot about Stormfist Crusader. That sounds like a lot of fun. The only problem is that it helps your opponents. Yeah, that's the only problem with it. Well, like Bob Tribal with a bunch of removal could be a lot of fun. It's like a bunch of burn spells and removal, but then with a bunch of bobs. Like that seems like it could work. Be kind of painful. You probably want a little bit of life gain in there. Maybe Kalidas. Since he would be running a whole bunch of removal, maybe Kalidas would be good. That is fine by me. Can I get the, uh, Vanquishers? Nope. Alright. Well, you know what we're gonna do? We're gonna swing. Yeah, Turbo Fog. See, that's what you need to make the Fevered Visions work, is you need the Fogs. Because if they're going to be drawing a bunch of creatures and flooding the board like crazy because you gave them a million cards, you need fogs or just a bunch of rads, but fogs probably would work better. Don't got a whole bunch of boomerangs in this format like you did in uh, Modern, so yeah, wouldn't work like that. And the opponent scoops it up. We take down probably one of the top three best uh, Pioneer decks, Hardened Scales, with a, uh, you know what, a $6 deck. A six dollar deck taking down a top tier pioneer deck that is awesome 
Got a game here against Eve2392, and yes, gonna be in a play with some $6 Elves and Pioneer. We're gonna mulligan that because we don't got mana, and this one we will keep and probably bottom a redundant Vanquisher's Banner. Yo, Games Bank Millie 60 bi How are you doing? That's quite the name. You've checked out your channel? Thank you so much. I appreciate you watching the YouTube. Ooh. Alright, I gotta draw land. Was pleasantly surprised. Content is awesome though. Pioneer $6 Elves deck. You're going to design panels, overlays, face cam, and offline screen for your stream. Oh! Oh. Oh, this is a bot. This is a bot. Don't, don't fall for it, guys. That's a bot. Whoa, what the heck kind of a... That's an Onslaught Foil Plains. That looks so pretty. Okay, we have to get up to this uh, and raise Foreigners fast. But we're dead in two swings, so we lost. They just attack and attack and we die. We can't win next turn, so... That'll do it. Let's go into sideboarding, and we need to bring in... Probably Dwinin to gain some life. Um, and That's probably it. So just a Dwinin over a... Elvish Visionary and run it like that. The opponent got the nuts, like Mausoleum, Supreme Phantom into Empyrean Eagle Nut Draw. That's the most aggressive spirits can get, and they actually needed that to race us there, so fortunate for them. But we get to be on the play now, and I'm gonna have to mull this one because we don't got enough mana. And this one I'm gonna have to keep. Throw away Redundant Forest. And play a land more elves. And I think I want to save this elvish mistake until I get out this beast whisperer. But at that point, hopefully they can't hold up spell queller by then. It looks like they won't be able to. Actually, yeah, they won't be able to. So let's just pass. You gifted a sub to a bot? <laughs> Yo, you gifted a sub to a bot? Cybershade, thank you for gifting a sub to Gamma's Bank Millie 60 BI. <laughs> that puts you at, s wait, three gift subs on the channel? I thought you gifted way more than that. But thank you so much. Can we get some duckies in the chat for a Cybershade? The opponent's got the super fast draw again. This is such a bummer. Like, can't race this. Don't tell me you got the Imperial Eagle Nut Draw again. Okay, thank goodness. But they're holding up Spellcaller now. But at least I get to draw cards, and that's what's important here. So, Elvish Mystic, draw a card. Ooh. Land War Elves, draw a card. Oh, don't get me flooded. Okay, Dawn is Elite. And here comes the Spellcaller. It's the first bot you've seen? Oh yeah, there's definitely more bots. What is this guy says he's a Nigerian prince and needs a favor to ask? What's up, D Carmona13? Uh, I'm gonna swing into the spell queller. Oh wait, they have a lord! No! I forgot, it's a three floor spell queller. Alright. Okay, they're not blocking anyways, that's good. Spectral Sailor. There's a um, electric longboard and electric skateboard. Those are bots, and also uh, the other boss is Commander Root. That's another bot. And um, who else is another bot? There, there's one more that like lurks around everybody's chat. Uh, let me see if there's any bots in my chat right now. I'm gonna look at my viewer list. Uh, yo, there's lots of you guys. <laughs> well, I guess you can count MTG bot. 
Cybershade's a bot. <laughs> Just look at that. His name is Cybershade. Doesn't cyber mean bot? All right, we're dead in two swings. See if we can win here. I'm gonna need to draw constant lords. Give me lord and lord here. The Englisher's Banner is kind of a lord. Elf. Go swinging. Spell Queller. And we don't have lethal, and they do have lethal, so that is the game. Yeah, the opponent is just getting these super nuts draws. It's crazy. Got a game here against Troubler04, and we're going to be on the play with some $6 budget elves in Pioneer. We're going to keep that because we got the Vanquishers. Fevered stacks. Yeah, that could work. But, um... They'd still be able to flood out. Like, there's not enough effective enough stacks. Like, the only stacks I could think of that would be good enough for that is a uh, God Pharaoh statue. That's a very nuts stacks piece. And if you can find a way to, like, mirror gallery and make it not legendary and just keep stacking them, that'd be awesome. Like, what if you um, used Karn to turn it into a creature and then you equipped a, a um, Helm of the Host to it? What's up, Berserker? Shocks of Hollowed Fountain. Is it Spirits? I doubt they just shock and opt here, especially since it seems like we're aggro. Ghost Fireblade, okay. So is it a SRAM deck? Blue White SRAM equipment? All right, Paradise Dude. And getting for one. I want to stop drawing lands, though. The only way that... I mean, if this doesn't get countered, the only way we could lose is if we don't get elves. Yo, what's up, System 4200? Welcome, welcome. System 4200 is still a mod. You know what? I should mod Cybershade, because Cybershade's always here. All right. I'm modding you, Cybershade. So now, if anybody is being bad in the chat and like cussing and 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 cursing people and and being a troll, you can just uh, slash time out them or slash ban them, either or. Don't go crazy with your power, but you have that power. Yeah, still though, if somebody's being bad, you can just put slash time out this person if they're being rude. Since you're here all the time, I figured, you know what, sure. You're always here through the entire stream, so I think you deserve the, the power. <laughs> you hope one day you can achieve this power? Soon, soon, son. I don't even know if I should keep um, System 4200 as a mod, no offense, because he usually pops in for like a second and then leaves, but at least he pops in to every single stream though. He he pops in at, at least at one point in every single stream, which is, but he used to hang out a lot longer. He's also a patron, so thank you very much for being a patron again, but yeah. Oh, you stay, you just don't chat? Oh, that's what it is. What happened here? Colossus Hammer? And we just get 15? How? <laughs> we just got 15 on turn three in Pioneer. Are you kidding me? We were about to start going off. Oh man. All right, well, I know what I'm bringing in. Rex Age, I need you. Oh, we can cut Dwine and we can cut N Rays and we can cut Elvish Visionaries. And run it like that.
In Discord, you should tell me what kind of things you would mute, ban, or... Oh, no, there... You don't have to... It's not like... Being a mod in Switch, Cybershade isn't serious. It's not that serious. Don't worry about it. You just get a new badge, and you can just rock that swag and badge. Like, you don't have to, like... You don't have... I didn't just give you a job. You just have a new badge. Would you like to play first? Yes. Oh, the only thing I would say is if anybody is being blatantly rude in the chat and like a troll comes in here, starts trolling people, you can just like slash ban them or slash time out them. Either or. All right. Uh, this hand is a keep. We got the turn two mana dork and hopefully if we draw a land, we get out turn three. Beast Whisperer. If not, we play a Marwyn and Marwyn's just fine. I might actually want to start on Marwyn regardless. Yeah, I'm definitely going to start on Marwyn regardless. Marwyn is definitely needed on the second turn. Or on the third turn. Either or. Okay, so it's literally just uh, Soul aggro. This is fine. We can definitely beat this if the opponent doesn't get that crazy insane nut again. Like, if next turn they just go Cigar to Zade, Hammer, we're probably screwed. This is your kind of deck, 4200, you got it. You can build this one for no price at all, for the price of $6 at least. If you're gonna build it in paper, it's $60, but on Moto, it's $6. All right, so the opponent got their aggro draw, but we can still beat this if they don't get like the crazy nut. Have you tried A-Rack and Pioneer? Super budget and does decent. I brewed it, but I haven't played it. I think I still want to start a Marwyn. I still want to get that Marwyn going just because it's there. It's very nutty to get Marwyn going. Um, I brewed it, but I haven't played it. Um, I thought about it, but it just needs a lot of help. A Rack and Pioneer, you don't have enough good discard spells. If you're gonna be making your opponent discard, you just gotta use a plethora of the Hand Disruption 1-drops. Like, you have Duress, Thoughtseize, Despise, um, and uh, Dark, or Harsh Scrutiny. And then you also have, um, like, Vicious Rumors if you want to run that. And at your 2-drop slot, you really only got, like, I don't know, like, Kite Self Freebooter, um, Brain Maggot, and Burglar Rat. And at the three drop slot, you got like Mind Rot and Heartless Pillage. And um, it's like fine. I mean, Davriel and uh, Davriel and uh, Shrieking Affliction are the win cons, but that deck needs a lot of support. I don't, like, I don't think it has enough in Pioneer yet to be good. Oh, that's right. Ginger Brood is unblockable. All right, well, let's go Beast Whisperer. Put a counter on Marwyn. Tap for two, play a clan caller. I should have played clan caller first. Hello. Buckley7171, thank you very much for the follow. So I'm gonna need a um that beast, that end race foreigners to win, but unfortunately I sided it out, so I think we lost. I'm gonna hit the opponent for two down to 17. The question is, can I deal 17? To deal 17, I think I'm gonna need to draw like another Elvish Clan Caller off the top and have that one draw me into another Elvish Clan Caller. I think that's the only way. Because this this Marwyn can hit for a lot. But we we'll, they're at 17, we have four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten damage on board. And if I get another Lord, that goes up to um 15 damage. Yeah, so I definitely need to just get some luck here, because this ginger brute's gonna kill me, because it can't be blocked. Yeah, I think I just got a scoop. I think we're dead. I don't think there's anything I can do, because I'm pretty positive I sided out the Unraised Forerunners. So, maybe, maybe there's a chance that in this deck you just want to play set of Marwins and maybe like two Enraises, because Marwin ramps into Enrays so easily. It's just so good when you get Marwyn going that it might be worth running backups. Yeah, but now it's going to be unblockable next turn, so... Let's see, maybe for some reason Moto bugged out and didn't side it in? 
Elvish Visionary. I'm pretty sure Dwinen has to attack to get its trigger. Like, we would be able to gain life, but... We also sided out Dwinen, too, so... Yeah, and the opponent's also probably holding up a Spell Queller of sorts. Um... Well, let's just have our fun and draw some cards, because we can. And play El Vanquisher's Banner for the lulls on um, Noggle. Put it on Noggle, and then let's scoop. All right, so Vanquisher's Banner on Noggle and scoop. So yeah, that Ginger Brute, unblockable. The opponent got like some crazy nut draws there, super crazy nut draws. That um, that Unsoul Artifact deck is just able a able to take down anything really because it can just sneak it out with those giant chunks of damage got a game here against down the rabbit hole and we are going to be on the draw with some pioneer budget elves and we have no mana dorks and only one land so we have to mull and this one seems a little bit better so let's keep that and throw away i'm kind of tempted to throw away a elvish clan caller because i'd rather go on the beast whisperer plan here and i want to keep my mana dorks uh, and this will draw me two cards when I have the Beast Whisper out. So yeah, I'm going to try to just find Clan Caller later. And I think I'm just going to go for the card draw plan now and hope that my Beast Whisper doesn't die. And if it does die, we probably scoop because we're out of ways to win. All right. Steam Benson says go. So is this like, is it control? Just don't shock my elves. That's all I ask. Oh, no, it's all good. Um, I was... Uh, I've, I've, people always bring it up, so I always tell my story on, on the, like, while I'm live streaming and stuff, so I'll say it again. But I was a mute, and I, I'm sure you know what a mute is. It's somebody who doesn't talk. And I was a mute growing up, all the way up until I was 15 years old. So just, like, all throughout school, people would bully me, because they, you know, kids, kids don't know, kids are dumb and don't know things. So since I was a mute, what they would try to do is just bully me and try to get me to talk. People would even, like get physical and you know like they would just like really just try to get me to talk and like harass me and and you know stuff like that and so i was like bullied for that reason because i didn't speak and so they had to take me out of normal school and put me into the the um the special education and uh usually the special education were where the special kids were i the only way I was special was that I, um, well, most of the special kids were, like, probably not smart. I, I don't want, I don't mean to be rude or anything, but they were, like, really not smart kids in special ed. But I, I would consider myself to be, like, smart at that time, but it's just the only thing that was wrong with me is that I didn't speak. Um, so that's the one thing I would say. But, yeah, I did that for, like... To finish up school like high school i was put into that in 11th no not 11th grade like 9th 10th grade or something like that no it was uh yeah i was midway through 10th grade i finished up 10th 11th and 12th in special education because i was bullied in normal school did i communicate through sign language um sometimes and um sometimes i would just write notes I, I didn't really know how to speak sign language, so I kind of just communicated through writing. Alright, is this getting countered? They're gonna opt. So Grixis Control is gonna be uh, the bane of our existence, a very difficult matchup because they are mono removal, basically. Alright, um, let's go Paradise Druid. And I'm just gonna go wide here and attack. Okay, so they're gonna flip their Jace and start shrinking my dudes. I don't want my dudes to be shrunk. I want my dudes to be big. Glad there's so much more being said about bullies these days. Yeah, but like sometimes people like, well, kids don't hear your pleas to bullies to like stop. 
like kids growing up, they don't hear that stuff. So they're going to do like, There's going to be bullying regardless. And it's the sad reality of it. But if there was a way to guarantee stop it, that would be cool. Because bullying ain't cool. It, like bullies are just like rotten people who don't deserve things. I learned this bully poem one time. It's uh, it's this poem by Shane Koizan. I'm into poetry, for those who don't know. What is this bully, this bully poem by Shane Koizan called? I used to recite it like all the time. All right, Glory Bringer, that's a really cool art. See, why did this art exist in real life? That'd be so much, that'd be so cool to own. Like on top of the pyramid, that half pyramid stair step like that. That'd be sweet. All right, I'm not even gonna care about Jace. I'm just gonna attack them. Yeah, if they want to block my zero two, that's fine. Yep, you can block my two one, sure. You go down to five, and I'm gonna play two more one ones. Can you cause Lex to turn the board, or did we go wide enough? They're going to flashback something with Jace. I'm guessing Fatal Push. They pushed Dwynan's Elite. But at least that means they don't get to shrink anything. So if they have one removal spell, they can stay alive. And they have Anika Bolas the Ravager. So they can live on one. And then probably stabilize on one. I'm still going for it, though. So they get rid of two of my dudes. They go to one. And then they can shrink a dude with Jace and then block two dudes. So that nullifies three of my threats. But that means two of them still get through. Two of my threats still get through technically. But um, they're going to be able to kill a couple probably. They're in top deck mode. They have one card that they just drew. So it has to be a removal spell. They can also wandering from rules. So they had to have drawn a removal spell. And then they activate Water Frame Roll, block, and then use a removal spell on the last dude to stay alive. Yep, so Jace is going to take up on the Druid of the Cowl. Now, if they drew an instant speed removal spell, they win. That makes them a complete Luxac because they, they would top deck it the last turn, last possible chance they have. But I'm still going for it because technically I got this unless they ripped it. And they're stalling out hard, so maybe they didn't. Oh! They just scoop it up. Don't even give me the option. Nice. All right, so this matchup, 100% need uh, Shaper Sanctuary. I'm not bringing in Mist Cutter because they still have Fatal Pushes. Um, Vivian's not bad, but when they have those dragons to kill Vivian very easily, um, maybe I don't want it. Um, so let's cut Dwine in, let's cut Enrays, and let's cut two Dwine's elites. And just bring the playset of Shapers and run it like that. Oh, it does exist? It's the pre-release pack promo? Just like the Thunderbreak Regent. That's cool. Okay, now we're on the draw, though. So they can get the head start on getting their mana assembled so that they can be stable while I start removing my dudes. All right, um, this has no payoff. There's no Beast Whisper. There's no Vanquisher's Banner. So maybe I, maybe I, uh, run this one back. Um, I think so. Like, it has no payoff. I'm just playing literally just one ones, one power guys. So I'm gonna mole. Okay, that one's a little bit better. I like that one better because it has at least cantrip creatures. So it still has four one ones like before. But at least they replace themselves. But now I'm kind of bummed out that after sideboard, the opponent's going to have access to so many sweepers. Radiant flames and such. Draw a card. Oh, maybe I should have played Lanor Elves to get around Legion's End. Going to head out, see if one of your classmates wants to kick it tonight. Well, peace out, Kyoji. Thank you for hanging out, as always. I'll catch you in the next stream on Wednesday. 
Uh, do I want to commit on my dudes or do I want to hope to draw something? You know, I don't feel like I'm winning with the things that I have on board right now. So I feel like I should just like wait and see if I draw like a Beast Whisperer or a Vanquisher's Banner or something. Because I don't feel like I'm going to win by committing a bunch of these one ones. They're going to be able to remove them and stay alive and stuff. Like, I, I don't think it's going to get there. I'm expecting them to have like a sweeper and such. Yeah, Kalidus as well. So. Yeah, I'm not I'm not gonna commit anything. I'm not gonna commit anything until I have the Vanquisher's banner out. So let's just keep passing. Let them keep looting. Have you played an energy deck in Pioneer? Yes, I have. We played um Marvel. And I was thinking about brewing up another um energy list based on uh one of the one of our patrons' decks that he submitted. So I'm thinking of playing another energy list. And I, I also did brew up um, the RG Pummeler deck, but then Saffron played it before me, so now that, that idea is off the board. Like, I brewed it up before before he did, but he played it before I did, and that makes all the difference. So now I can't play it anymore. Look in Discord. Oh, you submitted another energy list? Alright, um... Where, okay, there's, there's, there it is. Deck ideas. Oh, wait, is it in the main lobby? Hold on. Let me do my turn real quick. They're going to loot and flip their Jace at their end step. I don't know why at their end step, but sure. Oh, yeah, you have to be a patron to be in the... Be in the discord it's gonna make me discard a card all right let's discard wadden's elite i'd rather have the one drops to play after one of the, my uh effects uh i don't see a cyber shade where where'd you submit a deck in the discord Yeah, I, I should probably make a public uh, public Discord. I just never got around to it. Because I want, I want the patrons to have something special, you know? So I thought that having access to an exclusive server uh, where they can submit deck ideas and such and, like, chat and, like, talk about things and, and um, you know, submit ideas for the channel and talk about ideas for the channel. Uh, I wanted them to have something exclusive like that that was, like worth it, you know? Elvish clan caller. I mean, well, technically I can start getting stuff, but... Let's find out if it lives. The opponent's got one card left in hand, so they're kind of in top deck mode. And their last card seems to be a removal spell. Oh no, they're just gonna put some... Counters on Kalidus, that's fine. They can't quite mine his Jace just yet. They're gonna shrink Elvish Vizio Nari. What's your opinion, opinion about the infinite Beck combo? What's the infinite Beck combo? Um, yeah, it's, it's back in call, um, but I don't know what the, what the combo is with it. Keep taking Kalita so I don't have to block until I'm in danger. And is our last card ritual a soot? It's Yeheni's expertise. All right, I'm going to scoop it up to that. I'm not coming back from there. All right, so let's go on to game number three, and we get to be on the play this time, so that's a lot better. I'm hoping for, I'm really hoping for a opening hand to Shaper Sanctuary. That'd be very useful, because they keep killing my dudes, and I can't get anything going when they keep killing my dudes. But at least it looked like they didn't have a sweeper there, so that's good. Let's just not get a zero land opener. 
Okay, I'll keep that. It's a little bit slow, but it's got a Vanquisher's banner. Um, the unfortunate part is it's going to get thought seized, but or just K commanded. But at least it's there, so at least we have the hope. And all we can do in the marination is hope. You draw and generate infinite one one hasty thopters. That sounds cool. Except I saw that Saffron posted an infinite back combo already, so I'm not gonna copy him. I don't I don't copy Seth. Alright, can I get a mana dork here, please? Oh yo, that's a nice top deck. I'll take that. That's good. So now I might have a fighting chance to get back in this. And good thing I drew a redundant Vanquisher's banner. They're probably going to just thoughts use both of them right now, or they're just going to take one and K command the second one. Okay, they take the playable creature. Yo, Paradise Druid's a hexproof blocker. And if I draw a land, I can get up to that, uh, I can get up to that Vingshire's Banner. And they missed their land. Okay, this is, this is good. We might be in there. There's a chance of being in there. Oh, heck yeah. I get to draw a card. And they drew their island, unfortunately, so now they can start playing the game, which is what we don't want. We don't want our opponent to play the game. We want to be the only one playing Magic. Alright, now I can slam Vanquisher's Banner. And if this doesn't die to a K command, we are good to start comboing off. Left. Put it on left. Alright, opponent, do you have K command? You probably do. Opt. Looking for the land so that they can go land in a K command. They probably have to risk that. You can loot with Jace, flip it, and get a Thoughtseize back if you want. Take my other Vanquisher's Manor. And they're gonna Dreadborn. I get to draw a card. I'll say yes. Another Vanquisher's Banner. Okay. I'll peace out, D. Carmona. Have a nice night. Sweet dreams. See you in the next stream on Wednesday. They flip their Jace. And they get back a Thoughtseize. Oh, they get back an opt, looking to set up. They're in desperation mode, really need to draw some cards. Okay, Elvish Visionary, draw a couple cards. Beast Whisper, alright, let's go. I'm gonna go Druid here, so that I have the mana to go Beast Whisper plus another thing. Ooh, Land or Elves too, even more mana. And yes, I'm going to draw cards. Thank you for the card draw, opponent. Wandering Fumaroli. And Nico Bolas. Yehenny's expertise, that's fine. So let's go with a backup Vanquisher's Banner on Elf. Play a Lord, or play a Elvish Mystic. Draw cards, pass a turn. And now we're pretty set up. Now we just start playing a bunch of weenies and beating face. Yep, now we got two lords that don't die to removal spells. They die to K commands, but they don't die to removal spells. 
They can flash back a thought, see, see what we got, and then they're gonna scoop. See, they just wanted to see our swag and deck before they concede. <laughs> They take another Vanquisher's Banner. Now they're going to sweep the board again. Actually going to try to fight back. Which is Vengeance. Nico Bolas. Alright, let's discard a Beast Whisper. I have enough card draw already. Play a land. Let's play an Elvish Visionary. Draw three cards. Four cards. Ooh, Elvish Clan Caller. Nice. Elvish Mystic, Paradise Druid, go to combat, attack for 8, see once we have Shaper Sanctuary and or Vanquisher's Banner out, we can just destroy control. Because it's very difficult for them to deal with that kind of stuff. Ooh, they're getting in there. They didn't want to go down without at least hitting me once. They wanted to just get their little ping and... Get that satisfaction. Languish. They can sweep our board here, but they also sweep their own dude. And a Jace to follow up. Alright, let's play a Marwyn because she's fat. She's a fat lady. Land War Elves. Druid of the Cowl. Land War Elves. Land Caller. Alright, discard land, 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 Marwin. The opponent's trying to deck us out. They just want to keep getting languishes back. Because they can languish again, can't they? Yeah, they're going to get languish back again. But Marwin's a one-shot kill. Kalidus. Oh, Kalidus plus Languish. That's what they're trying to get assembled. I think they should have definitely Languished there. Noxious Grasp. I'm going to say no to that card draw. Marwyn's dead, but you're still dead. Like, you're still dead. Yeah, you're dead. You're empty handed. You can gain three life. They're going to make me draw cards. I'm going to say no. Tring and Druid of the Cowl. All right, so I can play another Vanquisher's Banner here for an extra Lord effect on Elf. Let's try to find the last uh, Elvish Clan Caller just because. Clan Caller? Nope. Alright, let's uh, go to combat and swing. I think this is lethal. I'm pretty sure this is lethal. Yep, they're taking it. Negative 13. Taking down a very expensive deck. With a $6 deck. Sweet. That's what we came here to do. The sideboard chamber sanctuary was probably the most clutch thing. I think that that card is definitely needed for elves. Budget or not. Like, I, I haven't really played that card much in non-budget elves. Just because I never really had a lot of success with it, but in a format like this, it's definitely pretty useful. And it came in clutch there to get us back in that game. So we can find that Vinkster's Banner, assemble it, and then just start drawing cards for everything we play. They can't keep up. Before we get into the sped up rounds of the video, I would like to remind you that if you were considering purchasing today's deck, or any cards really, it would be awesome if you purchased through our decklist link down below. That is our tcgplayer.com affiliate link, and when you purchase through that link, it really helps support the channel. And with that being said, let's resume the video. Hope you enjoy. Hello everybody and welcome to the sped up bonus games that were a little bit too long to make it into the non-sped up portion of the video. So as I always say, if you want to catch full games unsped up, unedited, and uncut from the video, you can go to the Twitch link down below in the description and check out the entire VOD there. 
So huge thanks to everyone's Rancor who dropped that huge gift sub bomb in the chat right now that you're currently seeing on the screen of Austin yelling. So this first matchup, this was the longest game in the video. This was a good like 40 minute round. Like this, this match took some time and uh, it is against blue red control the old deck that we played against in the last video that tries to win with a play set of uh provincial gear hulk as their only win con that was a couple videos ago and uh we're going up against that deck i immediately think oh this is going to be a horrible matchup but i'm able to go wide enough to just like bombard them there with creatures like i didn't even go on the card draw plan there i just went for straight up aggro and um it was too much for them to handle they actually ran out of card advantage and that's one of the things that um they kept happening with their deck like i expected this deck to be just full of card advantage but they kept running out of things to do and then scram scramble to find their way back into the game now in the second game they bring in flame sweeps and they have anger of the gods so with anger of the gods and flame sweeps and the potential of torrential gear hulk flashing back flame sweep it's going to be very difficult and I'm fearing the worst out of our, out of this matchup after sideboard. And uh, every time I try to get something going like Beast Whisperer or something like that, it just keeps getting countered. It gets Aether Gusted. I try to replay it again and Tarantial Gear Hulk is going to get back Dig Through Time. I expected them to get back a counter spell or like a Flame Sweep, but they actually just got back Dig Through Time. But it didn't matter because they untapped and Anger of the Gods. Now, I drew Mist Cutter Hydra. And Miscutter Hydra has protection from blue, so I can go ahead and block Torrential Gear Hulk all I want and try to stabilize, but they had a second Torrential Gear Hulk, and they're just going to swing twice at me and I die. Now, in this game, I top decked that Miscutter Hydra right there, and this is my key to victory, because it's going to be a 4-4 this turn, because it goes back to the top. So, it is now 4-4 protection from blue, and the opponent's only on a few mana. They're going to need two burn spells to kill this Miscutter Hydra because all of their burn spells do like two or three damage. So they're going to need to double up in this thing. It's really difficult for them. It's just beating them down like crazy. And even a Torrential Gear Hulk cannot block it because it's blue. And Miscutter Hydra just bodied them. Absolute all-star. If you're going up against control, Miscutter Hydra is just a beast. And uh, there is the proof in the pudding right there. Now let's go on to the next sped up game. And this is against opponent who's stalling out in the first turn. So what was this again? This was the, uh, okay, yeah, this is the Notion Thief Narset deck. So what the opponent's trying to do with this deck is use Narset to make the opponent unable to draw extra cards or use Notion Thief to steal your opponent's extra cards. So suddenly my Beast Whispers and Vanquisher's Banners are not lo looking too good. However, the opponent did have a lot of spot removal so I do end up bringing in the Shaper Sanctuaries. I don't get one in this game, but I do get Vivian going in this game, which gives me a lot of beaters to start beating down. And I'm pressuring the opponent a lot, a lot. And they find Ritual is too, but it only kills my um, things that are CMC 3 or less. So my Beast Whisperers get to stick around and I start pressuring them. But now with a double Beast Whisperer and a Vanquisher's Banner, since they play Notion Thief, every single creature I play is going to draw them three cards. So that's a huge bummer that I've like never ran into a Notion Thief deck in Pioneer yet until the day I choose to play a deck that wants to draw like 30 cards in a single game. So that's uh, convenient how that works, but it's a, it's a huge bummer. So we go into the next game and I get my, my good old um, Shaper Sanctuary draw to protect me from removal, but it doesn't matter when they have Notion Thief to steal all my draws. So I get out Vinkers' Banner, I have the uh, Shaper Sanctuary. Now, if I were to ever play creatures, they would draw multiple cards. If they are to remove my creatures, they would draw cards. So it's just, it's a bummer that I play a card draw deck and the opponent just like plays Notion Thief deck. So that it's weird how that the stars align for them there. Um, but we got super close there. Like we could have easily won that game there from that position if it wasn't for that Notion Thief. Because we had it going, we had the protection, we had the card draw. And that's how these matches today were going. Like, we kept getting so close to all of these potential wins, and the opponent just has this certain little ace in the hole that gets it for them. And just like in this match too. In this match, we go super wide, and we get a bunch of lords and go really huge, and take down the opponent's whole board. And we go down to three. Now, this is the point where we turn it around, but they had a Tarkus Command to burn us out. In the next game, um, we are able to assemble a bunch of blockers, and then we they had um, 
we had five blockers to their five to their four attackers and they had collected company at the end of turn and if they hit any creature they'd have enough with menace from that um ramanapa or that raging raptor um to rampaging frosted on to be able to just barely hit us for exactly enough and we had like a bunch of five five and six sixes on board and that's how the matches today were going where we were just getting an inch away from victory and then the opponent was taking it but this deck is very capable of getting a lot of wins because we're getting so close so we ended up with four total wins and i don't know if you guys noticed but in our losses was literally our opponent luck sacking so dang hard and nutting all over us really good literally the turn before we are about to win so this could have easily been like a eight win deck very easily our opponents just got super lucky today like literally just an inch away from victory on our side like literally this deck can do some serious work and i think that this gameplay video proved that with six dollars in the mtgo world or 60 bucks in the paper world you can actually win some things in pioneer in pioneer tournaments your locals play a cheap little budget deck like this doesn't break the bank and you can do some good stuff so i'd recommend trying this one out there's no reason not to because it's very affordable and uh see what you can do with it you can even if you have like a few more dollars you can go into green or go into black rather and splash shaman of the pack and if you have a few more dollars than that you can even put collected companies but if you go that route then you might not want the beast whisper vanquishers banisher vanquishers banner package mm -hmm. and just run instead coco and shaman of the pack um and then you probably wouldn't want end race forerunners and you can keep dwine in though like you can just probably run another dwine in there and just go beat downs and uh you can even go steel leaf champion if you want to go super ultra beat downs with clan callers and stuff like yeah there's there's different ways you can build it and still be completely budget so let me know what you think about the deck in the comments down below i hope you enjoyed the video hit that like button if you did and subscribe if you're new for the spiciest of gameplay every other day let me know a deck you want to see in the comments down below and go check out the social media links are down below as well as the link to twitch if you want to catch one of these live streams we stream every saturday monday and wednesday at 4 p.m pacific time hope to see some of you guys there thank you very much all the sponsors the patrons and the twitch chat and we're going to get on out of here thank you for watching and i'll catch you in the next video peace out